Awesome. All right. Uh, so welcome from my side, everybody. Uh, I'm Roman from ETH. And I don't think I need to advertise a lot to that crowd uh, that we need to improve the energy efficiency of the internet. However, I would like to differentiate before we start two classes of, of efficiencies. Uh, the application side refer, refer to the idea of packing more data, whatever data you're interested in, per buy transmitted. Whereas the network efficiency is really about using fewer gels of your quantity of energy per ballot you actually need to transmit. And that both aspects are very important. Uh, luckily, they are fairly independent from one another. So we can look at, at each other without caring too much about the other one. And today I will focus about the, the second one, the network efficiency. And in particular, I will uh, pitch two ideas about how to take to improve that efficiency by taking down two costs. The first one is what are, is referred to as operational, which consists, and the idea is to turn devices off uh, as much as possible in order to reduce the average power draw of your network. This is what we refer to as sleep more. And the second cost that we'll talk about are the embodied cost, uh, as were touched upon in, in the keynote, as far as I understood. And here, the idea is simple. I would argue that we can and we should use network devices longer in order to reduce the overall average cost per year. This is what is referred to as growing old. So let's get started with the operational ones. Um, you might know some this paper from uh, almost 20 years ago now, uh, from published at SICOM, this position paper where the authors made this somewhat provocative argument that the internet core consumes more gels per byte than wireless LAN which seems quite surprising. And they actually hammer the nail by actually showing with raw calculation that it can be quite a lot more energy uh, hungry. So how does that come to be? Like uh, what, what can explain such numbers? Uh, essentially three aspects. First thing is the internet, in, in the internet network devices are always on, been designed to be this way. Second point is network device, the energy consumption of those devices is generally independent of their traffic load. That means in today's devices, the power profile tends to look somewhat like this. So we are quite far from being proportional. We have a quite high uh, overhead that comes on just powering devices on. And the once we're there, we, see, we do see an increase in power consumption, uh, in energy consumption with the utilization. It's not that crazy. The, four, the third point is that in ISP networks, network devices tend to be heavily underutilized. And the reason for that, as you all know, is because they speed um, over provision their, their network so that they can sustain uh, peak traffic and be uh, resilient to failures. But if we look at point two, what that means is that we are essentially most of the time operating those devices in their least energy efficient uh, region of operation, which is, well, clearly suboptimal. So, Essentially, we end up in today's devices. Um, mainly, we get something like the rate curve, whereas for energy efficiency reasons, we would like something much more proportional. We're not the first one to realize this, of course. And this idea of turning devices, uh, turning devices off in order to save energy has been already investigated also in the, in the, wireless con in the wired context. You might know, for example, Elastic Tree that looked more than a decade ago already in the data center context more, more specifically. And they clearly show that there is, uh, there is a potential uh, uh, for massive energy savings by turning those devices off. However, those works, Elastic Tree and others, also highlight all the same sort of challenges, practical issues we face. Issues of convergence of the routing protocols, issues with management, like which device should turn on and off and when, and particularly what is killing the entire thing as of now is the huge startup delay of switches and routers. Like right now, we are talking about tens of seconds at best. So we're really not in a context where turning devices on and off a lot is something we can practically do. But if we step back for a bit, uh, the world of networking is not just the internet. Like there have been other fields that have been looked looking at networking, so exchanging information, while dealing with energy shortage for the very beginning. Uh, you can see here on the slide a blueprint of the idea of the smart dust. There is, it's from the previous millennia already. 
And uh, it was essentially the first kind of proof of concept of what if we were to design those teeny tiny embedded systems that would contain everything they need in order to sense their environment, store a bit of energy, and communicate with their neighbors. And today, we're 20 years later, and this vision has evolved into, well, what is now sometimes called the Internet of Things. The way we do this smart dusting has changed. Like the technology is not really quite as it was on this blueprint, but the functionalities are there. Today, we have embedded devices that are spread around and are able to communicate independently while being extremely energy efficient. So there are like more than two decades of research about doing just that, being efficient at networking while having energy as a primary uh, concern for the design. And in a nutshell, it boils down to trying to keep the radios off of those devices as long as you can, which is kind of comparable that to our, our initial idea of in our inter, in an ISP network, turning off um, or putting to sleep uh, the switches or the routers. In the embedded system world, there have been a lot of different approaches and work being done uh, in order to make that possible. So routing strategies that are more centralized, more distributed, or some kind of hybrid in between, and all with different performance trade-offs that are essentially that explore the design space extensively. The point that I'm trying to make here is that in that community, researchers have been deployed to design, deployed, and show that they could successfully route packets by having devices in their network that are essentially off by default. They are most of the time turned off or they're most of the time not able to communicate with the neighbor at least. So I'm here to argue that uh, for sure, we can take inspiration of the work that has been done in that community and, and see how, if and how we could, we could uh, translate those ideas into um, wired network design. Now we could ask okay, if we were to take that idea and redesign um, routing, routing protocols as we know them today with prime energy efficiency as a prime objective, how would that look like? I have some ideas, but it's not so clear in the end what would be useful, but most likely we would wanna have a, a management plane that is a bit more decentralized. For example, the node should be able to somehow know or learn when they should turn on and off. And then the key question is, okay, how well would that work? Uh, how much of the ener potential energy savings could we gain without degrading too much the, QE, the QoS, in particular, the, the latency provided by the network? That clearly needs some more research. Once we're there, um, it's, it's quite some changes that I'm arguing here. So it's worth to ask whether it is actually worth it or it would be worth it. So in the paper, we, we show some uh, simple calculations that, that show that if I look at today's typical ISP networks, uh, we have devices that are clearly not proportional and, and tend to have at least 50% of, of the maximal uh, power draw that, that is the pure overhead. And the utilization tend to be in the low tens of percent on average. And with those numbers, you end up with more than 50% of the energy could actually be spared. I refer you to the paper for details about the underlying assumption of that. But the key practical aspect that I already mentioned, the key challenge to, to get there is to improve the startup time. That is the time from the low power state to the ready to forward state. And for that, we're arguing that we really need to think the co-design of the entire system, the routing protocol that you need to be adapted to the off by default principle, the networking software that allow, need to allow us to boot faster, for example, and then the networking hardware as well. Like we need to use the right memory technologies, we need to read the, the right uh, power getting systems in order to take the average energy consumption down. All right, so that's about sleeping more. Now, about the embodied costs, um, you might know, and uh, I actually don't know to which extent it was touched upon in the keynote today, that the embodied costs of ICT devices are quite high. Uh, they are very high for uh, commodity uh, devices like laptops and smartphones. For servers, uh, the numbers you can find in literature vary around 10 to 20% for servers. For networking devices like switches, it's not so clear, but a priori one could, could guesstimate that it would be the same ballpark. And today, and reducing those costs is simple. We only need to use the hardware for longer. 
Right? The refresh rate in, in today's network tend to be between three to five years, according to, again, what we could find in the literature, and we can definitely do more. But then the reaction would be, okay, but a priori this would make our network less reliable because of failure, less secure, and harder to manage. And I would like, we actually argue that this is not necessarily true. Right? For example, all the networks are not necessarily less reliable. Actually, um, we can argue that or we, people have observed that the majority of hardware failures that you see in networking uh, devices tend to happen in the very early days of installing new hardware. That sounds surprising, but it is actually a very well-known fact from uh, reliability engineering of manufactured products that have a failure rate that looks like this bathtub uh, curve that I show on the right side of the slide. And um, we think, we all have in mind the edging effect that are on the right side, but the left side is actually what happens where we have manufacturing defects. And, and those defects, they manifest themselves in the very early days of when you, you deploy new hardware. There are always some, right? And, and on the volume of hardware you deploy, then it means that you always have some hardware that fails. But when this is through, then you go, fall down to a very low plateau of random failure until edging actually kicks in. We argue, or we, we have the intuition that devices that never fail in three years are very unlikely to fail anytime soon after that. And we see two indicate, two hints in, in that direction. The first is that the network vendors themselves, uh, the major one, Juniper, Cisco, they usually provide a five-year window between of, of, to support for the hardware they sell after the end of sale. And usually devices are, are sold for multiple years. So they kind of trust what they're selling. And we even have companies that actually specialize in buying secondhand networks and this dev, um, deploy and maintain support secondhand networks with very good warranties. If it's valid for them, it's probably valid to keep the network in it or the device in its original network. But okay, now what if we were to, uh, to keep the network devices longer? Uh, we need to understand what are the practical consequences of doing that. We need to understand essentially when the aging actually start to appear, right? We need to instantiate this model on the right side and try to get a better idea about when aging kicks in. You know, how many years does that really take in practice? I don't have time to get in, in the other two points. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you see the paper for our arguments there. To summarize, um, today I pitched two ideas about improving the internet efficiency, uh, redu uh, reducing the operational cost by letting the devices sleep more, and reducing the embodied cost by simply using the devices for longer. This is a pretty massive agenda. There's a, a lot of work to be done there, and we have some initial ideas, but only 24 hours per day. So if you're interested, feel free to reach out to us. With that, I'm happy to take one or two questions. Do we have questions from the audience? Yes, great. Hey, Romain, it's uh, Lars Eckert from NetApp. Um, so I had a question, um, and it's not specific to your talk, but it came up earlier too. A lot of the talks here, including yours, are you focus very much on the forwarding plane um, in, in terms of, you know, can you run these packet forwarding devices longer? And sure you can. I actually wonder if, if anybody has looked into the ratio of the, the forwarding plane to the management plane, because you might want to, you know, use new management techniques for these older devices and you can't because they're older devices that don't support this stuff and they might not get support for it. Um, and also I wonder what the, what the power consumption fraction of the management plane is versus the forwarding plane. I wonder if you have any feelings about that. Yes, that's a very good question. Uh, so the short answer is no, I don't have a feeling about that, but my general feeling is that we need more data, right? And, and that was also transparent from, from the talk from Noah just before. Uh, a lot of those things are very poorly understood. Like we, we don't really understand how does the power consumption of the switches come from, uh, all the routers, like how much do we actually compute in the routers today? This is not so clear. How much does the compute cost? How much does the switching cost? So how much does that depend on the technologies? Um, my personal feeling is that in today's devices, uh, most of the energy 
comes from the memory that, that is being used. Uh, it's not just my feeling, it's also kind of like, kind of compatible with the older studies that I managed to find on this topic. And so the management plane is not probably that big of a deal because you do exchange some information there and here and there, but it's mostly idle most of the time. Right? Um, so I would not expect that this is the biggest impact, but I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Um, the true answer is I don't know. Hey, Roman. This is Pep Nadeau from UCSD. Good to see you. Uh, I'm curious if I remember a lot of your dissertation work in the wireless and network stuff was about making any to any and sort of wide area communications work very well, which works well in the wireless domain. But you pull that over to the wired domain where you have single hop, single links, everything is aggressively star. There's two questions here. One is, can you actually take the any to any stuff from WSNs and pull it into that domain? And the other one is completely different. It says, can we take advantage of the fact these things are wired together to improve the way that we want to do wake up of devices that are otherwise powered off? Mm -hmm. I, I love that you bring that question up and I'm glad that you're in the room today. Uh, yes, of course, at least that's some things that I've been thinking a lot about a lot. Uh, so essentially, for those of you that are not familiar with the, the embedded wireless uh, networking, about 10 years ago, there's been this uh, kind of crazy-ish idea that if you flood packet through the networks and you do that right, it's actually the most energy efficient way of doing things, pretty much. I'm, I'm cutting in short, but flooding packets through the network can be the most efficient system, system wide. And that was the topic of my dissertation. And yes, I've, I'm, I've been thinking a lot about how to translate those ideas into the wired context, uh, where, of course, the physical layer being different, you have a lot of, of different challenges. Some challenges go away, but you have new things that, that come in. And I do think that we, we are, tend to be very scared about taking, keeping the utilization down. We want to keep the utilization of link down because we were very scared of, con of congestion. But if, for, if you look from an energy perspective, as we saw, like the power profile are really not proportional. That means that the energy cost of loading the links more is actually very small. And so I'm trying, I'm thinking a lot about um, what if we were to simplify the routing protocols by just letting the packets go and find their way through the network. That is kind of like my, very initial thoughts about how to translate those any to any kind of communication uh, into the wired context. Okay, so I'm going to give you a, t a question from the uh, from Zoom. Um, so Matt Johnson uh, asks, uh, he's curious about this argument as things grow older. If if you're modeling failure at the entire switch level versus the components of the switch, might be a better way to uh, approach the problem. So possibly individual switch chips might have longer or shorter lifespans than other mm -hmm. parts of yeah. the system. I don't know if you might comment on that. Um, yeah, that's that's a very good point. And, and again, I will, I will make the same, same answer as the first question. Those are things that I failed to find any detailed study in the literature so far. So this is one of the thing that I, I don't know. Um, but most probably, this is something that we need to take into account. Uh, the question is, what do you what do you call the failure? Like, is it some failure that is un unrecoverable, and then you need to replace the device, or something that you know you need to reboot? You know, those are two very different type of failures. Um, and and the interesting thing is that there's actually a lot of 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 um, theory in this reliability engineering world about like how to use those curves once you have them in order to make some prediction about the expected time between failures or until the first failure and so on. But all of those things require data. And this data I don't have, and I'm trying to set things up in order to collect this data. Uh, that means knocking at ISP's doors and ask them to you know, log those things if they don't already do it and share those logs, compile everything together, and then try to instantiate those models. Uh, that's things that we are trying to get started right now. Uh, 